protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Abundant blessings on this beautiful Wednesday morning. We're inching ever closer to the end of our Easter season. Uh, that may be a bit of a disappointment for some, but others it is this kind of increasing drum beat where the, the drum is just getting a little bit louder and, and the pace just a little bit more as we approach that monumental moment when we not only remember, but also reclaim again for ourselves the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. Not just them a long time ago, but all of us to this day. It is so important that we continue to be first person in all of this, that we continue to engage ourselves as disciples on the way as ones given a mandate that our heads should be on fire just as much as the the uh, tongues of fire came down upon the apostles so long ago and it is clear from our holy readings today from holy scripture that uh, there is a mandate that when when the message is given to a people even though they may say, we can't do this by ourselves. We are so worried, like at Ephesus when Paul was leaving the Ephesians. Oh, no, Paul, don't leave us, don't leave us. If you leave us, it will all fall apart. And he warns them, and he says, there are wolves at the door. There, there are ravenous wolves who will potentially come in and tear down everything that we have done in these last three years together. But everything that we have done together will not be in vain. I may leave you. It may be sad, just as when we said goodbye to our Lord at Ascension. And yet we become empowered. And that's going to be the promise when our Lord says, I'm going to send you the paraclete. Well, great, but what does that leave us? Mm, it leaves us with spiritual power. It comes and animates our souls. If we are not changed by the coming of the Holy Spirit, something is off. Something is missing. We're either putting up our own roadblocks or something is happening. Because once a Holy Spirit in, in, becomes indwelling in us, we are different people. We cannot be the same. We are peoples of mission, peoples with a purpose. And our Lord says that very same thing in the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, the Lord Jesus prays to his Father in heaven. He says, you know, when I was with them, I could protect them. I could. I could. I just, just by virtue of, of, of what you gave me, Father, I was able to protect them. But when I go and the paraclete comes, let none of them be lost. Let none of them be become victims of the wolves. Let none of them be taken away by the evil one. Let them be consecrated in the truth. And they knew the truth. They'd heard it from our Lord Jesus Christ. And we must know the truth. The truth not of our own making, not of our own 
opinion-laden uh, sense of what it is to be Christian. That is the quickest road to perdition. The truth is found in the tradition of the church from its very beginning when our Lord gave it to us in Holy Scripture, in the traditions of the church, and all that the Bride of Christ, this Holy Catholic Church, has been endowed with over the centuries. We are given every tool, everything that we need in order to go out and provide for the poor. And it's not just material possessions. If we go out and just give stuff, money, food, whatever, to the poor, but we don't give them the message of the gospel, then, then we have still left those individuals. We may have fed their bellies for a moment, but we've left them entirely impoverished for the rest of their lives. We must be able to have let the power of the Holy Spirit work in us so that we can preach the gospel in season and out of season when it's comfortable and when it's not. Because there have been wolves at the door from the very beginning. There will always be wolves at the door. And the minute that we get into this sort of Pollyannish kind of thing about the church and the way that it is, and oh, it's just so wonderful and sweet, and, and, and just turn it into some superficial, gooey sort of, of sentimental experience, that's about the time that the wolves come in and overtake us. And they say, those poor souls, you know, they, they, can def they can't defend themselves. We have to be solid in our faith, solid in the truth, know Holy Scripture, know the teachings of the church. To, to think that whatever we got into fourth grade or sixth grade or eighth grade, that that was going to be enough and that was going to carry us to the end of our life, heavens no, that is the quickest way to be eaten by the wolf, is to just assume that our, our juvenile understanding of the faith that we had in fourth grade or sixth grade or eighth grade is enough to carry us through life. We must constantly be reading, studying, learning, listening, praying, Holy Scripture, the truths of the church, because as our Lord says, if I'm going to send you into the world, you have to be consecrated in the truth. Otherwise, you're dead before you ever get started. And so I pray that after Holy Mass today, you'll come to the, come to the cafe, because in the cafe we're going to talk about our the saint that we commemorate today, St. Augustine of Canterbury, who was sent to convert all England, if you can imagine. But it's a great story. So um, so I hope everybody has a chance to go there. But today, as we prepare for the coming of the Holy Spirit, let's prepare to receive the, the power that the Holy Spirit is willing and able to give us if we'll only accept it. The power of the truth, the power of the fullness of the faith, the power of Holy Scripture, everything that our church has taught and, and provided for over the centuries. Let us be steeped in the truth. Let us be ready to be, uh, to be on the way, empowered by the Holy Spirit, missionaries now and into the future, ready to kick the wolves in the teeth and, and bring the gospel far and wide. Praise be Jesus Christ. confidence we offer our prayers. We bring our prayers before God who invites us into unity of spirit with him. So we pray for our holy church that she be guided in truth through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all leaders, government officials, that the grace of God will enlighten their hearts for peace and justice in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in these days of of imposed isolation, that those who feel alienated, lonely, cast off, desperate, for all those for whom human dignity has been overlooked, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our St. Francis of Assisi church family, 
that we may be formed and transformed by the word and sacrament and be united ever more closely to the Holy Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who have died and those who will die today, that perpetual light will shine upon them and that the rest of eternal peace in Christ may be theirs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the soul of Margaret Martinson, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray to our Father, good St. Joseph, as we pray, as you led the Holy Family, good St. Joseph, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our bishop, and all our priests. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care for the people of God, the church. With Mary, you raised Jesus, the high priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good St. Joseph, pray, pray for, for us. us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, God. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate as our dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all those gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, the living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until, until you come again. again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please pray with us now the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
when the paraclete comes, whom I will send you, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me, and you also will bear witness, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. May our partaking of this divine sacrament, O Lord, constantly increase your grace within us, and by cleansing us with its power, make us always ready to receive so great a gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.